All right, good morning, everyone. New day, new site. Um, so we got a lot of rain last night. Got yeah, about an inch or so over where I live and all over the cities. Um, so we're not gonna crack open the next one today, but uh, me, Blaine, and Tim are gonna go take a look at it and see what's what and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, I'm gonna meet John John, the trucking guy up at the uh, old site, and we're gonna get some equipment hauled out to the next one, hopefully, if it ain't too nasty. But, um, I'm just kinda, we're just kinda waiting on the call from Blaine right now. We're gonna, gonna get the truck cleaned out <laughs> from the last site. And uh, yeah, man, ended up with a whole lot more crap in here than I usually do. But it's like they say, don't ever trust a man that doesn't carry a knife or has at least 50 pounds of random crap in the back of his truck. And I think I'm at that 50 pounds. And I got a knife, so all good. If any of you guys know anybody that needs, uh, let me see, what do I got? I got two front calipers for... Uh, and upper control arm, both front axles for 97 Honda CRV. You just let me know in the comments. I'll give them a real cheap deal. Well, it is a good thing that I gave Blaine a call to see if he was still waiting for Tim because neither one of them called me and they're there already. So, let's see where we're going. We got a jam. Dude, what the hell was my lady listening to? What the heck? Here it is. The hell? Well, I guess we can come up the driveway. Blew yes, it did. Yes. All right, guys, I'm gonna jump in here because I kind of want to explain how retaining walls fail because they blow up and pop like a balloon. Let me just explain this. You know. When a retaining wall finally gives out, it doesn't slowly fall over, giving you time to go out and prop it up or move your car and get that out of the way. They just, boom, burst like a balloon. And it's a lot like when you're blowing it and blowing on a balloon and you kind of get that sense that it's gonna go. A retaining wall will give you every indication that it's ready to fail. The problem is, is too many people are like, oh, it'll probably last another half a year or a year. And what happens is, Sam said it earlier in this video, it's the rain. All you need is one heavy rain, and once a retaining wall is in a state of failure, that rain finds the path of least resistance, which when a retaining wall is falling over, is behind the wall, because now it's trapped behind the wall. It creates its own channels going down to wherever it's gonna go, but when you get a heavy rain, it's too much for a retaining wall that's not built properly in the first place and they just, boom, they just go all at once. So when you see the first signs and indicators that you, if you're an amateur and you think your retaining wall is in a state of failure, I'm probably more than likely going to guess that it is in a state of failure because it's even sometimes tough for a pro to recognize when a retaining wall is in a state of failure. And some of the signs and indicators that you really got to look at is, is the base level. But more important, because the base can just be a problem with somebody didn't base it right, but what's even more important 
is, is the wall leaning back into the bank, which you want just a titch leaning into the bank, or is it leaning a titch forward? If it's a titch forward and away from the bank behind it, you're in trouble. If your blocks start to gap and spread, you're in trouble. All of these signs mean that all it needs is one big gusher coming down and that retaining wall can blow out. Oh, did you man, look at that. We're fixing another wall on a hill, Blaine. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Most walls have some kind of hill in, involved. Oh, I know they do. It's either on the top of a hill or a bottom of a hill or a side of a hill. Damn, this one's messed up too. Yeah. That Look one. at that freaking lean. He's a leaner. And a washing. Yeah. Got a pretty good little going in the base too, but. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that salt is really going to work on these. Yep. Yeah, I think we should get, talk to him about getting that spray. Well, how does that work? Like, you can't really guarantee that, right? Like, like a warranty of how long? I mean, there should be, I don't know, there's probably something with the block. Some kind of, like, it should hold up, but then salt, salt adds, eats anything. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. So. Especially how heavy Minnesota salts. Yep but it needs to get sprayed. I think uh, start, I'd start spraying it yearly, just the tops and the front and make sure any salt that gets down. You know, the thing is, I'm sure it drips down the back and then it's eating the back of the block. Down oh, I wouldn't have thought about that. Through our, through our rocks. So yeah. I don't know how to combat that. So I know how to combat that and so does Tim. They make a salt slash graffiti guard specifically for blocks. And Tim does bring up a really, really good point here. It's easy to apply the salt graffiti guard when it's alongside of a road or a sidewalk. You just spray it right onto the face of it. But in a situation like you see with this retaining wall, that salt is gonna be migrating behind the retaining wall from the driveway. And so to combat that, before you do the install, you actually have to 360 degree cover the block. That means you cover the back of the block, the top of the block, the bottom of the block, and then after you have the wall installed, then you spray down the face. We've had to do this in projects prior to this. Um, one of the things that you do have to do if you decide that you're gonna take the step to protect your wall and this product that we're talking about is a graffiti slash salt guard so that if people apply graffiti to it it will easily remove but it also protects it against salt but it does require maintenance meaning you're going to have to apply it and then the next year reapply it and the next year reapply it now you're not going to be able to 360 degree reapply it but at least you can get some protection on the back side and then reapply it on the face as time goes on. Well, I gotta run up. I'm gonna go meet John. John. Danny. You uh, you on your? Uh, you want me to head on up to that site? Well, I, I just got out of the, just got out of the meeting. Oh, okay. What are you thinking? Like an hour? Hour and a half? Yeah, that'll work. I'm heading over to the yard right now. All right. Sounds good, buddy. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, we're gonna get this guy moved. In a little bit better spot without sitting on this super soaked seat.
on, baby. Don't run out of fuel. Come on, baby. It's like you're landing in an airplane. Oh, come on, baby, don't die, don't die. Perfect. Dude, those tracks are about as close to going as they freaking can be. Now, as long as it doesn't start spinning, we've had that happen where it sits there and just, it just spins. sits there and spins. Oh, he got it. Look at that. Look at that. That's in the cradle now, you don't have to put a strap on it. Yeah, we'll just throw the e-brake on, good to go. Oh, uh, you left the... Uh... <laughs> Holy man. He's a powerhouse. <laughs> you know the bang is coming and it still makes me jump every time. <laughs> every time. Did we grab a long? We need a long. Yeah. Is that a long one? No, this is a medium one. Got to the front. No, I didn't yet. rings for the yep those it goes right there right there
Why, yes, I am. What's your name, dude? Eric. Eric? Eric, yeah. Eric. I'm Sam, obviously. What are you guys working on over here? Oh, yeah? Done for the day? No, not till 4 30. What the hell are you doing in the rain? I know, I know. We don't get rain days. Ah. We don't usually either, but we finished up a patio or whatever and don't want to crack. We got a wall we're doing. Blew the hell out or whatever. Didn't want to open that up today and leave it for the weekend, you know? Okay. Yeah. Good to meet you too, man. I watch you guys a lot. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Any tips or anything you want to see different? Not really. I like, I like it. Hey, that's what I like to hear, man. Awesome. Hell yeah. Right. Have a nice rest of your day, dude. Yeah, you well, that was, that was cool. That was... Uh, Eric out here working in the rain for the city of Maple Grove. Cool dude. Thanks for stopping and saying hey. I really like talking to you guys. I know I know the rest of the guys like it too. Oh, you guys. Somebody parked their freaking truck and boat right where we're trying to put all of our stuff. All right, so here's what we're working with. Yeah, that is a that is a blown out wall. Man, those are heavy after a uh, three day weekend in building two patios in a row. <laughs> How do they got these in here? Are they staked? There's steak. Okay. Oof, that's a spider web right there. Let's see if anybody's home. Not that I can see. That's a blowout right there. Holy crap, look at that. <sighs> Morning, Sunshine. How was your long weekend? Good. Damn right. Damn right it was good. Long weekends are always good unless you're hurt or sick. Yeah. Look at this. Oh. That baby blew, blew out. Holy crap. It looked gnarly when I was looking underneath the tarp, but you get the tarp off it and it's like the gnarly factor got cranked up to 11. Looks like there used to be a brick wall behind there at some point, yep. You got a bunch of bricks in there. Oh, it was? Yeah, uh, the brick wall and then did that one over the front of it. And Also, dude, if you look, there ain't nothing behind there but dirt. Yeah. There's no drainage aggregate. There's, there's nothing. It's just oh. dirt. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Make some room or whatever and see what we got working with here. Making memories. Why, you know, if I was gonna name a boat, I'd do something like Unsinkable Four or like Wife's Bane or something like that. I think the last time we built the wall, we just used the center. Yeah. Where they pile the snow up. Yeah. Yeah, I remember this place. I hit that, uh, I hit that, uh, uh basketball. Yeah, I did with my smokestack. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Did I say that? 
<laughs> it was already like that. I seen it. <laughs> Everybody, everybody knows that Blaine is the name. I'm trying to get some shirts made that say, build it like Blaine. Yeah, build it like Blaine. He's pretending he didn't hear me. I'm surprised he got it up there. We were doing, we were moving it in the rain. All right, Blaine. No flipping over. He's got the best field of vision out of everybody. Yeah. May except for maybe Joey. Yeah. No, I don't know about this. Oh, look at how destroyed those tracks are. Dude, I was talking to Alex. Hey, he he slipped the same track that we did. Oh, really? Uh, so same one on that same side yeah. fell off on him right, too. Nope. <laughs> we gotta get some fuel in there. Plainer, plainer, he's my hero. Plainer's my hero. Really? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you need to set your standards higher. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know the code on that one. There's, there's, it's a funky code. batteries there they are oh. Open your mouth, Johnny. I was gonna get out of your way. <laughs> Worked out just fine. <laughs> you do. All right, guys. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that fence down. Oh my goodness. That's a pretty sharp looking agate right there. All right, it's gonna be a good day today. Uh, so I gotta get my impact and my sockets and. Uh, We'll get that fence down. Um, Blaine's running down to the yard to get some stuff that we need to get. And uh, you should be back right about the time we're done getting everything prepped. Right there. I don't know what's over here. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. I thought I'd seen one. Oh, before. those are just. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> hey. <laughs> those are the paper wasps, though, so luckily they shouldn't be in the ground. Okay. Um, they'll they'll be uh there'll be a big old hive somewhere, but that is that's unfortunate. Yeah. I don't think I got any of my spray any spray in the truck anymore either. But I'll go look. Ah, oh, you must be driving. Call has been forwarded. I'm trying to catch him before he leaves the yard. I think I got a couple cans of that wasp killer up there.
You know, when Sam said that there was no drainage aggregate behind the retaining wall, ah, that did not shock or surprise me in any way, shape, or form because I could tell almost just by looking at the kind of block that they used that there was going to be other problems with the retaining wall. Let me explain. If you're going to use a cheap block in a retaining wall, you're probably going to cheapen out on everything else that makes a retaining wall the right way. And there's not a whole lot that goes into these retaining walls. But if they are missing any single component, then a whole lot can go wrong really fast. And so when I see cheap block, I'll usually think, okay, there's probably not going to be a lot of drainage aggregate behind it. There probably is not going to be geogrid behind it. They probably didn't take the time to base it right. And they probably didn't take the time to do a lot of things that really make a retaining wall last. And in the upcoming video series that you're going to see, we're going to show you everything that we do to build a retaining wall that should hopefully last you much longer than you guys will be around. My goal is to never have a retaining wall fail while I'm still alive. And that's the way I build them. And that's what we're going to show you in the upcoming video series. That's all we got for you on this one. Next one, we get right into the basin and all the fun stuff. God bless. Go get them, you guys.